my whole left side started shaking. I was in denial of what was going on, but after a couple weeks, my roommate called me out to my mother and the doctor's appointments began. Now I had a constant tremor in my left arm, which was prohibiting me from playing the cello, which I had played since age 10. Oh. Double vision and vertigo started to happen but the MRI showed lesions, and I was diagnosed. But fortunately, I was diagnosed at a time when there were three drugs, and I immediately went on Avonex. I stayed on it for 10 years. Unfortunately, I kept progressing, and there weren't any stronger drugs yet. So for the next nine years, I went on a double dose of Avonex. <sighs> so many ups and downs, and so many needles. Of course, there have been many times in, throughout this journey that the light at the end of the tunnel was very dim. Through multiple relapses and side effects of medications, I really didn't think it would get any better. But I kept on pushing. <laughs> I kept on pushing. And I kept hoping that there would be better drugs coming out. Then miraculously, in 2017, Ocrevus came out, Woo! and I was immediately switched from Avonex to Ocrevus. <clears throat> I've been in remission since I started it in 2017. Who <laughs> would think that a six-hour infusion twice a year would be a blessing? But let me tell you, it is. Let's give it up to science! <laughs> before I contacted the MS Society for some information. Specifically, I wanted to see if there was support for younger people living with MS. I was 25 at that time of that call. And living with this complex disease was definitely a different situation for those of us in our 20s. I kept thinking, what if I had gotten diagnosed in my 30s or 40s and hopefully had a career or family? But honestly, no matter what age, it sucks. <laughs> Once I spoke to the MS Society and learned that there was really, wasn't the support I yearned for, and I thought this was something that really needed to happen, it really needed to be a priority. I knew that there had, been to be, had to be more people out there like me in their 20s with MS. It just so happened that concurrently, <laughs> as I was seeking this help, there was another young woman calling and asking for the same thing. I will never forget that day I met Ms. Laura Wyden. I finally met someone who understood all the questions, all the uncertainties, all the fear and all the sadness. We knew that if we were trying to find others in our same shoes, this was a need that probably is being felt by so many others. Eventually, with our spirited desire to help and the help of the MS Society, we started the under 25 group in 2005. We and the MS Society put out the world. As the years rolled by with a continuous flow of engaged attendees, the group changed its direction to those under 30. <laughs> <laughs> then it was those under 35. <laughs> Finally, getting into our ages, <clears throat> it became a support group for those 40-ish. <laughs> But let's be honest, no matter our ages, we just wanted to share the love and support that Laura and I needed all those years ago. I changed the name recently to MS Happy Hour because that's what it is. Since the beginning of this group, 
The goal has been to communicate and share with others in similar MS boat because we MSers get it. Then we started the support group. When we started the support group, we were, excuse me, we went anywhere that would take us and offer space, bars, restaurants, and coffee shops. But eventually, we were offered a stable place of our own once a month at East Burn. But for the last few years, we've been meeting at the Rogue Brewery. We just had to keep it casual and comfortable with good food and drinks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then COVID happened. <laughs> we did what so many others did, and we began to meet on Zoom. Over this two-year weirdness, we have had new members join, even a few from out of state. Even though we're not so young anymore, it feels extremely good to know that we're still known for younger people living with MS. Still going 17 years later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have now lived over half my life with MS. People say, don't let the MS define you. But I really feel like it made me who I am in so many positive ways. I think because of getting MS so young, I had to learn so many hard lessons at a young age. Maybe MS wasn't the path I was looking to take, but maybe I was supposed to take this path so I could inspire people. By giving people a little hope and some strength in times of need, MS really has become my career. I wrote a book about my experience living with MS, it's called Stronger Together, My MS Story, available on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> I was chosen to go to Washington, D.C. for the public policy conference in 2018. And my love of music encouraged me to organize a fundraiser during COVID called MS Got Talent. <laughs> Along the way, I worked out to retrain my brain through neuroplasticity. I would be remiss if I didn't give credit to my trainer and friend, Jason Thomas of 17 years, and how he helped me carve new pathways in my brain. And my total appreciation to my service dog, Hatchet, for helping me, me educate the world and everyone we came in contact with. He was an amazing, and he got me through so much. Unfortunately, he passed this year after 14 years of love and security. <laughs> Again, ooh, this is amazing. <laughs> Again, I want to thank the National Multiple Sclerosis Society and especially Tracy Leeper for assisting and helping the millions of us through our journey with MS. The motto, motto of together we are stronger couldn't be any clearer for any person living with disease. No one can do this alone. Also, I have to give lots of credit to, not only to the MS Society, but to my family and close friends who lived and breathed every moment of my bitching, moaning, <laughs> but also my successes. Thank you, Mom and Dad, Aaron and Miles, April, for joining me tonight. There will be a time I'm sure when I'll be able to say, yeah, I used to have MS. Oh, yeah.